let's go ahead and uh, show you the uh, the slower way to go ahead and create a uh, HDR sky so we can see what our reflections are looking like here we can go to create on the menu here and I'm holding down the left mouse button actually as I go through because what happens is when I let go of the left mouse button if I'm holding it like this it'll automatically create whatever object that I have uh, my mouse over so that's great it's created a sky for me and uh, with the sky selected if I go into my content browser and um, I can just right click on these uh, these dots here and I can go ahead and undock it and uh, I'm actually running a dual screen setup here um, and with dual screen um, there's a number of reasons why you, you probably want to get a second cheap monitor for yourself um, if you're going to be doing this uh, more than just hobbyist um, but um, docking your content or having your content browser on a separate separate screen is uh, one of the great reasons to have a uh, second monitor in the Cinema 4D pipeline. Um, but uh, for the sake of uh, this screen recording, I'm going to have the uh, content browser here. And uh, what we're going to do is um, we can navigate into computer, and um, I've actually got all of my. Uh, materials in my media and downloads here in my downloads folder under graphics and multimedia I've got my software applications all lined up here nicely and then um, I've got a graphics asset folder it has all my graphics assets so I can quickly get things done for clients um, random uh, models of iPhones uh, different Halloween gear uh, axes and swords uh, mansions buildings other models I've created um, different different assets like that uh, for various different programs uh, so that you can just quickly get work done and you can you can turn around your your content to the client as fast as possible um, but uh, we're going to go into our HDR images here and uh, we're actually going to go into our CG source well no we'll go into the DOSCS uh, HDRI images here and we'll use the uh, DOS skies and we'll use um, our landscape versions here um, these are some HDR images from the DOS website um, and take a look at their packages they have some amazing HDR packages as well as um, some amazing um, other as 3D assets that you can use um, to quickly get projects turned around um, let's go ahead for a nice uh, sunny sky one how about this and what we could do is we could actually just straight drag this file right into our materials manager and hit no to create the search path we can drag this off to our second screen so it's out of the way and then we can actually apply this material to our sky um, next we're going to want to go into our render settings and we're going to want to set up our global illumination that way um, the sky's material will actually be the illumination and light source for uh, this character that we have in the scene here. This way we don't have to set up any lights at all for our scene and uh, our sky will realistically illuminate and cast reflection on our character. If we hit render now, we'll see that we have a global illumination pass um, that went through and it basically calculated out um, shadows and samples and things like that uh, those little dots were basically samples of light and it was uh, basically bouncing light off the uh, the figure based on um, based on the samples that it, it took in that pass and it generated lighting based off this sky so that is beautiful um, with that we can quickly test um, what's going on with um, our reflections and uh, our maps um, and this way we can actually generate an environment map without having to use fake environmental mapping. Uh, as we can see, this dress uh, has a extreme reflection going on. It is completely reflecting our sky. Um, and it just looks absolutely terrible. Um, so, with the uh, dress material selected, um, we're going to actually go ahead and get rid of its specular and specular color. 
um, Grayscale Gorilla has a great tutorial on um, well has a number of great tutorials there's one particular tutorial on grayscalegorilla.com that went over um, the idea of uh, reflection um, the fact that light reflects off everything in, in regular world and it's just photons reflecting back into our eyes and uh, based on what they reflect off of based on the properties of that object um, and the way that the light hits them um, our eyes perceive different things about those objects um, technically you don't need specular uh, you can use reflection for everything although you'll probably pay a price in some rendering performance perhaps um, Specular is a fast but uh, a really dirty and fake kind of way to generate reflected light. Uh, reflection is always going to generate realistic light. And um, by dialing down your reflection settings on, say, your skin and things like that, you can generate specular without actually using specular, which is great. Um, this dress already had reflection for some reason out of that, so we're going to go ahead and keep it. We're just going to dial it down considerably because it, it's a little oppressive. And we're also going to up its blurriness a little bit, so the uh, reflection is a little bit more refracted um, around. Uh, we're going to create um, basic delusion through uh, through blurriness that uh, this is more of a, a cotton, uh, a more diffuse uh, light uh, dispersing material. That's what we're looking for. We render now. We're getting that look. Um, the uh, the dress is looking a lot more, a lot more, um, a lot flatter. Um, there's a lot less, uh, a lot less reflectivity going on. It's it's looking more uh, like um, the fabric that uh, Daz probably meant it to look like. Um, although if we looked in, uh, as we saw when we were in Daz, it was more of a it was more of a reflective kind of sort of. It seemed more like a silk. Um, in this case, I'm going for more of a cotton look, but um, it's something that might have been a little bit more difficult to achieve in Daz, or it's something that um, you probably wouldn't have been able to tweak out with um, some other render settings like ambient occlusion and um, the ability to use you know hair systems, uh, have different particles reflect off of it. There's there's just a lot that you would have been missing. Um, had you have been using Daz to do the same effect. All right, um, so we're looking pretty good here. Okay, um, there's only only a few more things I want to uh, discuss um, in this tutorial. Um, for our face and skin materials, um, another benefit of coming in here into uh, Cinema 4D is you have the ability to do um, more targeted uh, subsurface scattering. Uh, we can use our luminance channel and we can kind of get in, we can kind of create a, uh, a skin texture that's going to give our skin a little bit more life than it probably would have gotten out of, uh, out of Daz uh, through its initial rendering system. Um, so we can go ahead and up our luminance all the way to white. Uh, Daz loves to bring in these materials at black. Um, I find that white is a um, is is perfect to multiply against um, for your materials. Although it's not really going to matter with the luminance because we're going to have a texture that's going to kind of sort of overwrite the color. How we're going to come in here and create a layer shader, and what the layer shader does, it allows us to um, basically layer multiple shaders on top of each other and use blending modes to um, kind of uh, blend them together. We can click on the layer shader to go into its properties just like we clicked on our uh, bitmaps to go into their properties. And the layer shader has a area that um, we can populate with shaders. We're going to go ahead and uh, populate it first with a fusion shader and click on the fusion shader's little black icon to go into its properties. And we're going to use a Lumis shader which is just basically a, a lighting shader that uh, creates some um, sort of luminant material uh, depending upon the channel that it's in. If we go into the luminous, luminous Luma shader now, we can go ahead and turn off all the speculars. We won't need any of the specular. Um, in the shader properties, we're going to go ahead and use open layer. 
we want to go ahead and set up the open layers roughness a little bit and we're going to set its illumination up above 100 percent to give it um, a bright um, white shading we're also going to come into the color picker and we're just going to click and drag off to the side um, to get white I found most of the time that if you try to click in the corner here to get a pure perfect white oftentimes no matter how close you get you're never gonna actually be able to click um, and get that white if you drag off and kinda just drag your mouse away from the side you have a better it's it's a lot easier to actually get that pure white you can also type it in it's 255 255 255 um, that'll give you your pure white um, we can go ahead and hit this up arrow to go back into our shader properties and in our blend channel um, first we'll set the mode to multiply we're gonna want to multiply these two shaders together in this fusion shader um, in our blend channel we're going to want to use a Fresnel shader the Fresnel shader um, basically uses the camera as a method to uh, display um, the results of a, a gradient um, and what we'll do is um, we'll actually set the initial color and as you can see I'm dragging off and kinda down and around to kinda get that mid-gray um, perfect mid-gray would actually be 128 128 and 128 um, And uh, mid gray um, with multiple uh, with the multiplication and um, and with the Fresnel shader is basically going to give us like no Fresnel on the edge there. Uh, we'll set up another co color close to the mid gray. We kind of want to taper off the color so that there's no there's no coloration um, on the edges of the gradient. And then we'll want to set this to um, a light skin color uh, something that's gonna match her color um, it's gonna match her skin tone and give us um, give us a rich uh, a richer a rich skin tone there and then finally um, we just wanted to taper off in the black which, uh, when blended with the Luma shader, basically mean it's, it means it's tapering off into um, into a white sheen along the edges of the uh, of the model. Okay, and with those two blended together, we've got our basic sheen. Um, the the idea of of human skin, where um, where the edges seem to just be a little bit lighter, a little bit more luminant than the actual um, the actual inside of the skin depending upon where you're taking um, uh, depending upon how you're taking a picture alright and then we'll add one more shader um, to regenerate the subsurface scattering that um, occurs in DAS we'll just use the subsurface scattering texture or, or shader here in Cinema 4D we'll click on it and uh, we'll use the uh, dark shader to give her um, a dark skin tone uh, subsurface scattering um, I think what we'll do is we'll actually bring down the skin shade a little bit more um, so it's not so luminously bright um, in the sunlight here and uh, we're looking pretty good there go back up and back up again to get back to our material and uh, to quickly uh, transfer this channel to all the other skin channels we can just uh, very easily come in and um, click on our layer shader channel here and copy the channel and now we can go through we can add luminance and uh, we can click on the arrow and we can click paste channel and we can just quickly get the material applied to all of our skin materials very fast So I'm just going through here and I'm adding uh, luminance and um, pasting 